from London Gatwick Airport to Bilbao, Spain. The futuristic Bilbao terminal, almost like the aeroplane, the Concorde, about to take flight. A short bus trip brings us to Santonia. And our hotel, the Juan de la Cosa. Where we have a sea view balcony room, which we found to be very comfortable. After a busy day travelling, we wind down watching a display of Spanish dancing. We watch the sunrise over Berria Beach. It's time to go adventuring with our saga host, Belen. Into the local town, Santonio. The city gate honours Juan de la Cosa, the owner and master of Columbus's flagship Santa Maria, also Martin Alonso Pinzon as the captain of the Pinta. Santonio's economy is based on fishing for anchovies. A colourful factory with the Virgin Mary, Nuestra Señora del Puerto as their patron, also displayed on the factory frontage. Local art depicts anchovy and deep sea fishing, as well as sport fishing and the Santonio Fort. At the rear of the factory is the deep harbour for the fishing boats, and a more open but shallower anchorage for smaller boats. The edge of the visitor's marina looking across the waters to Laredo. Nearby, this unusual bit of architecture. In contrast, some really rundown buildings in the port area. Bullfights are still held, the big one being in honour of La Virgen del Puerto, an annual event. Along the promenade, we encounter the Canyon Lago España. A tribute to a fishing past, fishing for Sula, a small silver coloured fish with a hand rig. Looking across the bay to the nearby town of Laredo. Monument built to honor Juan de la Cosa, who was born in Santonia and was a 15th century navigator and map maker known for having drawn up the first map of the world, the Mapa Mundi, which showed the territories discovered in America. We pass the town crest to head into the shopping area, passing this unusual statue with both rusted and painted metal portions. We love and encourage recycling, this bin says. Some reasonable graffiti. Colourful advertising for the nearby florist shop. We find a statue to Miguel de Cervantes, author of Don Quixote. As his birthplace and early history are unknown, we don't know why he's connected to Santonia. Plaza de Abastos, Market Square. A fisherman holding an oar is honoured with a statue on Fisherman's Roundabout. The imposing horseshoe-shaped Fort of San Martin, built in the 17th century. The patron saint of Santonia, the Virgin of Santa Maria del Puerto, carved in stone, overlooking the sea from which Santonia receives a bounty of fish. From this vantage point, we watch some of the fishing fleet racing home. before we too head back to our home in Spain. We take in the beach, surfing and a view inland showing local housing. A new day with a trip into Laredo. Watch out that you don't trip on this pavement, which is actually totally flat. Not ideal. If like me, you suffer from spatial awareness problems, thank goodness for the scooter. I could not walk along this. We do pass the marketplace, but we are not visiting it today. 
the included excursion is into the old town with lots of steep roads and many many steps so with me on the scooter we take ourselves off on our own discovery trip we always enjoy harbors and marinas and can look across to the mountain that backs santonia on the way to the tunnel which takes you to another cove we find this private shrine then into the tunnel to come out and find Tai Chi classes on the go. Coming home, we pass the Santonia prison, which looks out over our beach, Beria Beach. Today, we are heading to a famous monastery and Fuente Day, a cable car up in the peaks of the Picos de Europa. Passing an ancient church in the fields of the foothills of the mountains of Europe. The monastery of Santa Toribio de Libana is one of the five places in Christianity that, together with Rome, Jerusalem, Santiago de Compostela and Caravaca de la Cruz, has the privilege of issuing perpetual indulgences. Founded prior to the 6th century, the monastery venerates the largest piece of the Lignum Crucis, wood from the Holy Cross, discovered in Jerusalem by St. Helena of Constantinople. Access is normally by the public entrances. But the monastery of Santo Toribo de Labana has a special forgiveness door, normally kept closed and locked. When a period of forgiveness is notified, then, for six months, those who cross the lintel of the forgiveness door and observe certain religious duties will have earned a plenary indulgence and forgiveness of all their sins. It is not clear, but it seems that perpetual indulgences are celebrated every time St. James's Day, the 25th of July, falls on the Sunday. However, while indulgences are given in specific and regular periods, ecclesiastical authority can propose exceptional years. The Lignum Crucis is kept within this secure shrine. Moving up into the High Picos. We are at Fuente Day in the High Picos. Sadly, we cannot take the cable car ride, as today's tickets had been sold out prior to our excursion trying to purchase some. In the town of Potes, the statue of a man riding on horseback honors the country doctor who for decades used a horse as it was far faster and more practical means of transport. Walk around Potes with us.
Now admire the interior of the Iglesia Nueva de San Vicente. On the way back to Santonia, we visit the small church of Santa Maria de la Venia, nestled in a valley in the Picos de Europa. The church stands alone, fairly remote from any local villages, and there is a beautiful air of tranquility. Until a passing jet reminds us that we are in the 21st century. An excellent meal and then sundowners watching a sunset at the hotel. Today we are in Castro Urdiales waiting alongside the harbour for our guide. We are visiting the church of Santa Maria de la Asuncion. While we wait we can look upon Santa Ana Castle with its lighthouse and the church of Santa Maria which we are to visit. Our guide now takes us past El Pedregal. This is a rock beach in town which is fed by the sea through a tunnel. It may be the result of a cave roof collapsing. The Church of Santa Maria de la Asuncion Due to the number of steps and me on a mobility scooter, we have to take the scenic route that gives us another view of the harbour. And the open sea of the headland on which the church is built. The church, which seems to soar to the sky above us. After carrying the fold-up scooter inside, we see this giant clamshell baptismal font. What a treasure from the sea. Outside again, looking at the rear of the church. And towards Santa Ana Castle and the lighthouse. Looking back into the harbour through the ruined wall of the Church of San Pedro.
We now find the statue of an ancient harpoon whaler, and his lookout dog, and he has found a whale. The sculpture of a whale partially submerged in the bay forms the other part of this tribute to the whalers and the whales. We walk and scoot to the promenade, eat the most delicious ice cream cones, see mules on the side of buildings, and just generally feel very relaxed. <laughs> Once home, I walked the beach along and back, just short of a kilometre each way. The local prison is visible from the beach. What a location for a prison with this beach view.